Hi, Smart Pack fans. I'm Smart Packer Sarah. She's Dr. Lydia Gray, staff uh, veterinarian and medical director here at Smart Pack. And we are back with another episode of Ask the Vet. Ask the Vet. That's right. And we're here to answer horse health questions submitted by riders like you. And this is our 29th monthly episode. Oh, really? Yeah. Including, well, including our special episodes that That's we've right. done. The bonus. And yeah. uh, I'm proud to say we are officially an international sensation. <gasps> wow. I don't know about s sensation. I don't know how you officially get that credit, but, but we are international. Okay. We got a comment that uh, says was posted on YouTube and says, I absolutely love these videos. I always try to come up with good questions. It's a lot of knowledge with a funny undertone. <laughs> you are very kind and you know how to butter us up. But we don't mean it to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sometimes do, and then other times I just wear a fly mask upside down. <laughs> you know, it happens. She says, very valuable, kind regards from the Netherlands. The Netherlands. That's a very That's exciting nice. international destination. Yeah. So that was awesome. Thank you guys always for the feedback. We don't read all of the comments that we get, but we do treasure all of them. And we send them around, and they can brighten some tough days. Yeah. So it's always a nice thing to read. So thank, thank you for you. the feedback, yeah. and thank you for watching. Without further ado, I want to jump into our first question, okay. which was asked by Tia on YouTube. And she's wondering, I love how you go into a lot of depth with your mm -hmm. answers. Mm -hmm. It's really helpful. And then XX, which I think are kisses. Okay. Because I think the O's are hugs. Wow. I never know? figured that out. Tell us in the comments. And then please, can you ask how to treat small cuts and grazes? Please. XX. And then a kiss emoji, which I think confirms that the X's are oh, in fact right. kisses. I see. I see where you're going. Okay. So we're okay. talking treating small cuts and yep. grazes and also lots of buttering up. I won't confirm that that's the reason the question was chosen. To get picked, yeah. Yeah. But no, I, you know, I, I did um, see this one and I picked it because there's, we get lots of first aid type of questions like mm -hmm. what to have in your kit and when to call the vet and this just seemed like a natural progression and I don't think we've ever really talked about it. Because it's hard. Um, people seem to have a, a problem with seeing a problem in their horse mm -hmm. and then calling the vet. Like they think they're going to bother the vet or they're going to get charged or the vet's going to think poorly of them or I don't, not sure what it is. But as you gain experience and wisdom and practice treating wounds, you'll probably call your vet less and less. But I absolutely would not hesitate to see something on my horse, clean it up a little bit take a picture mm -hmm. and text it to your vet and say, is this something you need to see or am I good just kind of following your advice and handling it on my own? That seems super easy, super yeah. fast. They'll thank you because trust me, they'd rather hear about it at the beginning when mm -hmm. it's just happened and not a big deal than two weeks later when it either was a puncture mm -hmm. that you didn't recognize, it was over a bad place like a joint, um, it involves structures, it, uh, it developed maybe proud flesh, and then they have a massive problem. And you won't be happy either because now it's more expensive. And instead of being healed in two weeks, you have to start completely over. And it might be two months now mm -hmm. and your whole show season is gone. So I, I really think until you and your vet have a good understanding of what your level of expertise is and, and their trust for you, just send them pictures and say maybe, and maybe they'll say, you know what, I'm, I'm really close. I'll just whip by and take a peek. Mm -hmm. So the first thing though, um, you do even before you take that picture and with any wound, even if you're sure that you're gonna treat it yourself, is clean it. And I think people might be shocked to learn that probably the best thing to clean a wound with is water. Um, just How revolutionary. I know, I know, and cheap. You just put your, get one of those fancy heads that turns, you know, and you can do like those, all these different oh, choices and strains. Oh, the and the yeah. mist and, and the shower. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. use the shower. Use the shower setting shower and clean setting it up. The get the, um, the debris out of it, the big stuff you can see. And then that also will flush it with, from, with the uh, bacteria that you can't see. And so clean it up a little bit and then you can take your picture or whatever. Um, the other good thing to clean it with is saline. Mm. And that's something you can get from your vet, or I think you can probably get it from um, drug stores mm -hmm. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Pretty, and it's cheap and it's easy. That's the best stuff because it's um, isotonic, meaning that the water will irritate the cells a little bit, but the saline is exactly what they are bathed in already, 
and so they're like, ooh, more lovely warm baths, so that's good. Um, but they say nowadays, try to stay away from the betadines and the chlorhexidines because they don't do any better job cleaning out the wound of the bacteria. Wow. Surprising. Yeah, and they do a little harm. Because so, you know, my oath that I took was do no harm. So we don't want to get in there and kill any cells of the body because mm -hmm. we need those cells for the healing portion of it. Um, the other thing that you can clean with is surfactant based wound cleansers. Things they have, um, these sound terrible, but polysorbate 80, and there's another chemical, but the, the surfactant based tends to um, collect debris and bacteria and cleanse the wound without doing damage to the cells. Mm. So water, saline, and surfactant based wound cleansers, the ones that are designed for that. Okay. Or the ones you clean it with. Um, and then everyone wants to put something in it. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Goop it up. There is a human, it's just human nature to put something in it. And goop it up is a good term. <laughs> it's the same principles up here. We, we don't want to do more harm. Mm -hmm. So really there's only two things that veterinarians now say, and you can tell they're doing research on this all the time. There's only two things that vets say now to put in there. Triple antibiotic, mm -hmm. good, good, you know, good old standby and silver sulfadiazine cream. Mm. I think we have the... We do indeed. Just triple antibiotic. Triple and we carry that only because it really should be in every horse owner's vet kit. But And you can get it practically anywhere. So just always have that on hand. And it's so cheap and it's so small. Don't don't use it and then have a little roll up icky, dirty tube. Let's just throw it away, get a new one. I mean, yeah. you know. It's pretty cheap. Um, but the key with that even, as safe as it is, you only use it for the first three, four, five days, mm -hmm. and then you stop using anything in there. Because the, the phases of healing are that, first, first it, you have to stop the bleeding, and obviously I didn't mention that earlier, but if there's bleeding, that needs to be stopped, and, and really a, a wound that's bleeding a lot needs to be seen by a vet. Yeah. All right, so the body does that, and then the, the body sends white blood cells there as part of the inflammatory phase mm -hmm. to clean it up further. They help get the bacteria out. They, maybe your cleaning didn't do. And then the proliferative phase begins. And it's where the wound bed granulates in from mm -hmm. the, the bottom or the inside out. And then, this is really cool, um, the, when it gets to the skin layer, the skin cells, the epithelial phase, they, they close the gap in a leapfrog fashion. Yeah. So that's why you don't want a goopy, yep. goop it up. You don't want that in there because it prevents them from leapfrogging. They're in this ointment and they're Can't like, leapfrog Can't if it's slippery. Leapfrog. Yeah. Can you so, imagine on a slip and slide yeah. trying to leapfrog? So in the, in the inflammatory phase, fine, but in the in the proliferative and the, the phase where they're leapfrogging over, you don't want stuff in there. You might want to cover, good question for your vet. That's why the picture and talk to them. Um, but once the wound is covered itself and you can't see that really bright pink tissue anymore, it probably doesn't need bandage and doesn't need anything from you. And I mean, you look at it and observe it and make sure it's continuing to heal correctly and there you go. So. Never be afraid to send pictures to your vets. Technology has helped us hugely oh, yeah. with this. I yeah. have texted my vets um, or emailed my vets pictures of cuts, but also yep. things like pictures of poop um, if oh. you're concerned about the consistency or the normalcy of what like you've got going color. on with your horse, and they're not shy, and they, you know, they've got those they data rates, they, they got that, that unlimited data, and they can, <laughs> they can take those pictures. Yeah. Um, and if you guys don't have one of those, uh, if you're just using a straight hose and you want to experience the luxury of the shower setting, it's the ultimate hose nozzle that you Ooh, can buy that okay. has all the crazy different Ooh, settings. Yeah. It's pretty great. And so our second question was submitted by Carrie, and Carrie used the Ask the Vet form, which you guys can find at smartpack.com slash askthevetquestions. And Carrie is wondering, is it okay to share tack and grooming tools between horses? This, I love this question. Why? Because I think it's something that barns do a lot and don't think about until there's a problem. Yeah. And then it's like, now what do we do? I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you a little secret is, um, I go to a lot of barns, not, even sometimes as a vet, but sometimes just as a, as a rider. And, and I just as a busy body. Just as a nose. You're person. just wandering around. And I wander around and I see shared equipment and I'm, 
I, I have like germ goggles on mm -hmm. because of my vet training and I'm like, oh man. So things are like a spinning red light on top and it's like well, womp, they, womp. They, they look I mean, they, they look like red to me when I <laughs> see potential areas of germs crawling around. And I, I just think of, you know, obviously skin diseases like your rain rots and your ringworms and, and warts could be passed from horse to horse. But not just that, um, equipment, whether it's brushes, uh, tack, bits. Yep. Um, saddle pads. Saddle pads, blankets, sheets, yeah. um, anything that comes into contact from one horse to another can, can be a fomite. Ooh, what is a fomite, you ask? I don't know. Okay, so fomites are inanimate objects, like all those things we just listed, that diseases, bacteria, viruses, can, can be on and wait and be passed to the next horse. So things like, diseases like strangles, influenza, herpes virus, yep. they don't need, they li well, they like nose-to-nose -nose contact, but they don't need it. Because if your horse puts his head in a water or feed bucket, and then you use the same water or feed bucket for the next guy, their work is done. They just have to sit there and be taken in. Yeah. So I, I don't think people think about that. I, I went to a show once with my own horse, and I was unloading, and the person who went with me said, I'll fill the water buckets. I didn't think about it until I saw her filling the water buckets. Mm -hmm. And I had to go over and tackle her mm -hmm. because she was taking the hose of the showground Dunking and it. putting it in the bucket. And so the bucket was filling up with water around the hose. And that's not even each horse in the barn's different buckets that yeah. you're sticking the hose in, but it's the hose from the showgrounds that's Strange definitely been horses. in other people's buckets. Yeah, so you've got to have your germ goggles on anytime you're working with horses. And the experts in biosecurity, that's the field it's called, will tell you better even in your own barn for every horse to have his own stuff and their suggestion was to use colored duct tape, and so this horse gets blue, and this horse gets green, and this horse gets red. There's more suggestions of that when it comes to biosecurity when you have, say, a strangles outbreak. They, the red horses are the sick ones that are showing signs, and the orange ones are the exposed ones, and then the green colored duct tape are the ones that haven't been exposed and aren't showing signs. Mm. So the colored duct tape is a handy, handy tool, All whether right. you, whether you have an infection or you're trying to prevent one. And that's how you can train your germ goggles so that yes. you can get them to be expert level like yours. Yeah. Although it sounds scary. It sounds like you see germs everywhere, and it sounds like it would be um, a very a very concerning and stressful experience. It's, it's stressful because I go into places and I see, you know, situations that I wouldn't do it that way, but I know that it can be more work and more expensive mm -hmm. to have everyone have the dedicated equipment. Um, and you get, you might start out that way and then there's no diseases or outbreaks for a while and so you get lax. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's just human nature. Yeah. So. Um, not a best practice, sharing brushes and equipment, no, for sure. But easier, for sure. But that whole conversation did make me think of a great joke. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. You ready? Oh, maybe. Would a puppy or a kitten kick you? No. No, but a foe might. Oh, my ah! goodness. Did you just think of that? I did. Wow. I thought of it the whole time <laughs> you were talking. And you were like, I got to I'm this so before. excited. <laughs> Ah, great reaction. Oh, wow, all right. Okay, our third question was submitted by, and I'm going to do my best on this pronunciation, Lenthi Schuten, who is our fan from the Netherlands. So thank you for the oh. great feedback and also for the wonderful question. What is the healthiest snack for a horse and in what quantity can I feed it? This is a great question. Cody's very excited to find out what he can have <laughs> unlimited supplies of. You know, I will start with a story. Uh, I do stories, she just jokes, yeah. just so real clear. Uh, my story is I was speaking at an equine affair or one of those expos and someone came up and they couldn't figure out why their pony was overweight. And mm. so we worked, went through the whole, what do you feed it and turn out and exercise. And turns out they, were, they loved him so much they were giving him a bag of peppermints a day. No, oh, yeah. sweet boy. I bet he deserved them, though. I'm sure he deserved them, but um, while peppermints might be great treats, not that that quantity is a little excessive. Yeah, uh, we did an exercise here. Because they're basically here. just hard-packed sugar. Well, <laughs> yeah. So here, 
We did an exercise at, at um, our last training. Oh, It was nice. very fun. We took, these are nine peppermints, and this is the sugar in nine peppermints. Wow. It ends up being 45 grams. So you're right, it's just sugar with a little... Um, Food coloring? <laughs> probably, and then flavor. Yeah. Versus, here's something that people give horses a lot. You take that mm. one. I'm holding 19 grams of apple. And then I'm holding 2.9 grams of carrot. I think people think that carrots have more sugar than apple, and this shows that they have less. You would typically expect that vegetable to have less than a fruit, though, right? You would, yeah. but, but the, the out there on the internet, on the internet, mm, is yeah. that, that don't feed your horse carrots if they have a sugar right. issue. Apples because, are yeah. the, the healthiest treat. Yeah, I've right, that. yeah, so there it is in, in white, in white, okay. as opposed to black and white. Well, I mean, um, there's a little black on the label. <laughs> Here's the in really interesting thing. Oh boy. This is two pounds, or about 900 grams of sugar, and it's from how much a hay a horse would eat per day. So we get a little caught up. I thought you were going to say like a 20 ounce soda. <laughs> well, I don't think, I think there's more sugar in a 20 ounce soda. <laughs> um, people get a little caught up in treats and supplements and that, but don't forget, this is how much sugar your horse is getting. From its hay, mm -hmm. so we so I started on the sh the sugar kick, <laughs> the sugar high. But um, healthy treat is is sort of a vague mm -hmm. name because healthy in what respect? Mm -hmm. If your horse can't have sugars and starches, then clearly you're looking for the lowest sugar option. But what if what if that's not a problem? What if your horse can't have potassium, say, because it's HYPP? Then you have to sort out the treats that are low potassium. Um, what if he has a food sensitivity to something? Then you have to avoid the treats that have that in it. So it kind of healthy is mm -hmm. a, a term that depends on what issues your individual horse has. And also, I put um, Newman's favorite treats up here. These Newman. these Hilton Herbals he gets when I pull his mane. Those things, they're small. Mm -hmm. they're, I think they're very healthy mm -hmm. as far as ingredients, but their form is not for everyone. Mm. Because if you have an older horse with questionable teeth, they're not going to do so well with those. They're yeah. not going to be able to chew them, and they're they're not going to be able to they're, they're, they're going to swallow them whole then, and potentially you, you could have a choke. So even the form is important, not just what's in them. So I, I know people hate when I answer, but it depends. Um, so you have to look at what your horse has that he's dealing with. And then, and then look through the options, whether it's commercial treats or whether it's human foods, and, and choose the best there. And yeah. as far as quantity, they're treats, so you don't give them, I'll say, a oh, bag of peppermints. You, you use them as a treat, mm -hmm. you know? They don't, they don't count. Um, so I think just any expression of, you were a good boy today, is, is probably sufficient. Don't go overboard. Yeah. Okay. Question four was submitted by Sarah, great name, on the Ask the Vet <laughs> forum. And Sarah has previously asked a question about the reasons you would feed your horse a magnesium supplement. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So it was a good one. And you can find that in our archives. We break out all of the individual questions in our horse health library one by one. And uh, we also have a whole YouTube playlist where we have all the old Ask the Vet questions. Yep. So if you want to see the answer to that one, go check it out. Sarah is wondering, how do you tell if a horse has an allergy to fly spray or some other product? I've heard of horses having reactions to citronella, but what are some other common ingredients that horses may have a reaction to? All right, so we got two questions. How do you tell if your horse is having a reaction, and what are some common ingredients that might cause it? I better start with the common ingredients, because if I get talking about the other, then I may forget it. Yeah, so okay. Here's, here's a list that I found. Um, Neoprene, like, is in some mm. splint boots. Mm -hmm. Some horses do, or girth. Some horses just don't do well with neoprene. Um, wool, mm -hmm. and the lanolin in the wool, but there's also lanolin in products, like sure. some shampoos and yes. stuff have lanolin. Uh, rubber or latex, like you might find wrapped on a bit or something. Yep. So those are some common um, uh, products that horses can have a local reaction to. And then our first question is, how do you tell? Um, when you're having a reaction to something that you contacted, so mm -hmm. contact dermatitis, it's in the area right where you touched it. So if you're gonna have a sensitivity to bedding, 
then it's where you laid in bedding. So a horse mm. might get up and have a little just sh shaving stuff on stuck on them, and then have bumps too. It's right there. Um, if it's a neoprene or or something, then then right where you put the neoprene, if the wool might be in the saddle area. Mm -hmm. If there's something on the bridle, so if she's talking about fly spray, if you spray if you sprayed it in an area, a certain area, it would be exactly where that spray landed. So what you do is, and then the signs would be the the hives, the bumps, itching, maybe um, some dryness or hair loss. But what you do is you don't put something on a horse on its entire body the first time. You do a patch test or a spot test and you just pick a little area, you apply the product and then you wait 24 to 48 hours. If your horse is going to have a local reaction, it will happen in that time frame. If not, chances are he's okay with it and you can use it everywhere you need to. So I think, did I answer that both? I think that answers oh, both of the questions. <laughs> Do you know, and this is a separate but kind of related question, okay. if horses are like, and this might not even be true for people, but I've heard <laughs> that if the first time you're exposed to something, you might not have an allergic reaction, but then subsequent exposure could cause it. Is that, do we see that same sort of a thing in horses? Yes, but allergies are different. Ooh. So you can have a contact dermatitis that is not allergic. Okay. And you can have hives that are not because of allergies that are just because of irritation. Yeah. So a, a locally skin response, the local ones probably aren't um, systemic immune related. And mm. so that phenomenon that you're describing of the first time you get a freebie and the second time, well, that's not going to happen. Um, because that's more related to allergies, allergies not related systemic. specifically. Now, if the horse has a true allergy to a substance, then yes, it's, it takes exposure the first time, and then the next time they, they get worse. Okay. So that can happen too, and that's why allergies and high pseudo allergies are so challenging to figure out, because you don't know what the things were that could have caused this, because it's systemic. Yeah. Like contact ones, you can, it, the reaction is right there where you it's put localized. it. Localized. Right, and, and systemic ones, the true allergies are like whole body, but it could have been something that they touched or inhaled or ate. Um, and so then you're back, you're that process of elimination. Yeah. Oh. But what you can do to help yourself out in a situation like that is something my good friend Dr. Gray always <laughs> does, which is journal what oh, you're doing yes. with your horse. Because if you write in your journal that you started your horse on a new feed, or you introduced a new product, whether it's a topical right. product or a piece of equipment that has mm -hmm. wool in it that you've mm -hmm. never used before, and then a couple days later you notice that something's happening, those might be trends you could share with yeah. your veterinarian to help you in that overwhelming process of elimination oh, of all be. of the things yep. that could be causing what's going on. Exciting stuff, great question. Our last question for this month is submitted by Linda, also using the Ask the Vet form. Love you guys using that form that we created. And Linda's wondering, my 11-year-old mare is clicking very loudly in her hocks. She is moderately exercised. Last year, she drank quite a bit of water and peed a lot, I thought. Interesting. Does she need the HA shots to the joints? What would you recommend? I was very interested by the interjection of the water in relation to the clicking in the hot. Yeah, and I'm not going to be distracted by that. <laughs> you can't throw her off. <laughs> I'm going to focus on the, um, the clicking, the snapping, the popping. There's yep. lots of different names for it. Interestingly, elk and caribou have, because of... I thought you said elk. I did say elk <laughs> and caribou. Because of where they live and the conditions under which they live, they have developed, they have evolved to have a communication system that, no. in, yeah, that where their ankles click when they walk. That's how they know where the herd is. I think I might be part elk. On uh, my ankles, <laughs> my, I have one, uh, my right ankle clicks when I walk. And it's just a, a tendon snapping over a bone. It doesn't hurt, there's no swelling, and it's not getting worse. Um, so in my case, I'm going to ignore it as best I can. And that's, that's the case for, for everything. If there's no sign of pain, which in horses would be lameness or unsoundness, mm -hmm. if there's no swelling, no heat, if there are no negative signs and all you hear is a sound, um, snap, crackle, pop, then 
more than likely, it's, it's a soft tissue moving over a structure. It's not something to worry about. Absolutely, you can talk to your vet about it, and I would. It's, I always recommend that. Yep. But don't be worried and don't jump to conclusions. Oh my goodness, something terrible is happening. There, there can be a different sort of noise when the cartilage wears out in a joint, mm. and so you have bone-to-bone -bone surfaces meeting, and when you move, it makes a sound that's different. It hurts. So you'd see that in your horse's reaction. Yeah, and you'd have there be pain and swelling. So those would need worked at, looked at, but um, if it's just the sound, you may just have to sing, hum, <laughs> and learn, learn to ignore it. Um, we did have this. Or embrace it and try to understand <laughs> what she's trying to communicate to you. Like an elk or caribou. Yeah. We did have this question years and years ago when the Ask the Vet blog just started, and um, Dr. J. Miriam answered it for us. I just want to read a little bit of it. He talked about people, you know, that crack their knuckles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> that's a, a closed hydraulic system suddenly expands by stretching the membranes and there isn't enough fluid to fill the space so oxygen will actually form bubbles and come out of solution and form an air interface with the joint and this is the sound you hear and it's harmless. Yeah. See, mom, so. it's harmless. <laughs> so there's, there's lots of reasons why you might be hearing sound in a particular joint and if you don't see any other signs it's probably harmless. If you do see something else, um, I would certainly talk to your vet. So. I, I don't know, and I, again, I'm not distracted by the drinking and pain. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that is what we have for this month. Thank you guys so much for the questions. They were wonderful. We had a good time. I had a great time. I came up with that joke. Oh my, that was great. Uh, my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, so you can submit questions for our August episode on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, the blog, which is blog.smartpack.com. Uh, Twitter, or of course the Ask the Vet forum, which is growing in popularity, Ooh. and that's at smartpack.com slash askthevetquestions. And we will be taking all the questions up through the final date of eligibility, and then we will be closing it out, so you got to get your questions in in time. And don't forget to use hashtag askthevetvideo so that we can keep track of all of those great questions that you're asking out in the social media sphere. And then if your question was answered in this or a previous video, you can email customercare at smartpack.com okay. to get what? A gift certificate? A, a gift smart card. Pack gift card, that's right. And uh, so you can claim your gift card and have some happy shopping ahead of you. You thought I was going to say fomite. I <laughs> to get a fomite? I, yeah. <laughs> that would be, I mean, that's not what you want. That's not a reward. <laughs> no. So as always, don't forget to subscribe so you know when the voting comes out for the next video and when more great questions get answered. And thank you for watching. Thanks for asking the vet and have a great ride.